Hello, everyone. Hi. My name is Shesha Driko Tiarachi, and if that's a bit of a mouthful, you can call me Shesha. That's what everyone does. So, before we begin, I'd like to ask all of you, every single one of you in this room, to take a deep breath. Come on. And let it out. Okay, great. Let's try that one more time. Together. Deep breath. Let it out. Okay, what you just did was an actual privilege, and let me tell you why. Right now, in India, we all know what the situation is like. There's a bit of a fog going on, and when I say a bit of a fog, it's pretty terrible because I read recently that helicopters can no longer, you know, fly above the city because it's that bad. How many of you found out about this situation online? Let's have a show of hands. Hold on. How many of you found out through Facebook? Okay. How many of you found out through Twitter? How many of you found out through traditional media, like the TV or a newspaper? So, from what I can see from up here, most of you found out about this online, right? And this is just how powerful the situation is. Information, news, messages pass through, you know, oceans, pass through continents so fast. So fast that other countries knew that Sri Lanka was going to have a cyclone before we did. So, I want you all to keep in mind that this is very, very important, the fact that we are so interconnected, and it's also something that we talk about quite often. Now, I'm just going to give you a brief background as to who I am so you can understand why exactly I'm here. My background is in international relations, and as was mentioned, I will be graduating with an English uh, major in a few days' time. And while I was an undergrad, something that I constantly thought of was how are these two areas ever going to connect? How is international relations, politics, and international law going to meet, you know, Shakespeare, Dunn, and um, all those authors, all those English books that I've been reading? And the reason that I'm telling you this is because when I first started going for interviews to find a job, as we all do, I wasn't too sure where to start or how I would end up. Somehow or other, I ended up in the communication sphere in several NGOs. So when I started going for interviews, I would move towards communication, social media, web development, that sort of thing. And an interesting story was during one of my very first interviews, it was going great, by the way. I was answering all the questions right. He was super impressed. The panel was like, yeah, yeah, you're doing pretty well. You're doing pretty well. And then, towards the end, my potential employer looked at me and said, you know, I'm just going to ask you this question. It's, don't, don't take it too seriously. I'm just asking. We ask everyone this. Are you active online? And, you know, I thought to myself, look, I'm 21, 23 years old. Of course I'm active online. I have Facebook, I have Twitter, I basically you know, live on Instagram most of the time. So I told him, you know, yeah, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I do have Facebook, I do have a Twitter account. And he said, okay, that's cool. Um, do you mind if I check your Facebook profiles? Do you mind if I check your social media? And I thought to myself, yeah, I mean, except for an odd selfie or two, there isn't anything too scary on my social media accounts. And so he checked my social media, and he was like, okay, this is, this is going good. And I never heard from him again. Um, the point being, and I found out later, was this gentleman thought that my social media influence, the content that I spoke, the information that I shared, could actually be problematic in a way that it could misrepresent the organization that I was applying for. At that time, I didn't think too much about it. But now, when I look back, I realize that what had just happened was this gentleman realized the potential that someone as young as me could have on his organization. And by default, the potential that all of us have as young people to make an impact and to make a difference. And that was the story of how I flunked my first interview. One of the questions that I was asked towards the end of this interview was, so, would you consider yourself an activist online? And to be honest, guys, I really did think about this. You know, except for my rants on how much coffee I like to drink and how much I think Marvel is better than DC. Please don't kill me. I don't have anything too controversial, right? 
But, you know, I will talk about certain issues that I'm passionate about. I will talk about, you know, equality and equal representation. I'll talk about the unfairness of certain political endeavors which I see. And I was wondering, why did this label me an activist in this gentleman's eyes? Because as a child, these were the faces of activists that I considered were true and valid. You know, it's very easy for all of us to go up there and give an opinion, but that doesn't necessarily make us an activist. It makes us an advocate, right? And I wasn't out on the streets with, you know, boards and signs, you know, yelling for this, stopping traffic and causing disruption. No, I was merely sharing my personal opinion. And yet, there was an individual out there who thought that this opinion could make a difference. Now, very briefly, this is what an activist is, someone who campaigns for something, someone who stands for a purpose. And I never considered myself to be one. Does this look familiar to any of y'all? Do any of y'all know the meaning behind this? I mean, it was all over Facebook a few months ago. What about that? I mean, the fruit salad just keeps going on and on and on and on. But do any of you all know what it's about? Exactly, breast cancer awareness. So apparently, I looked this up. This means that I'm the better half, which I am. And <laughs> this means that it's complicated. And apparently, these two symbols stand for breast cancer awareness. And what's interesting about this is it was very, very popular among young people online. And for a good two, three weeks, my news feed was a frigging fruit salad, which I just didn't understand. And at the end of the day, there were people who said, you know, you know what, at least people are talking about breast cancer. At least this sparked a conversation. And you know what, they were right. But what really came out of it is what I would like to question y'all. And what I want y'all to think of is just how much a small trend like that started up and then just fired through and we all know about it. Here are two more examples of something I've seen that you know, we all contributed to. And a round of applause to everyone who's always been a part of these kind of movements. Sri Lanka went through several devastating natural disasters this year, not counting the most recent one, the floods in May 2017, right? And when this situation was going on, I was actually involved with an international organization who did a lot of groundwork. And for the first time, that organization was investing in social media and wanted to develop its social media outreach. So a lot of work that we did um, involved us sharing information online on our Facebook pages and no longer in traditional media. And ladies and gentlemen, I know that you all will agree with me when I say that a lot of the work that happened, a lot of the um, collecting of items, you know, the, the volunteerism, it all sparked online. You know, at least one of us here, well, I'm pretty sure most of us here, would have shared or retweeted or at least seen these on your newsfeed. And it would have impacted you. And by sharing these, by, by showing these to other people, you would have impacted so many other lives. And you probably wouldn't have even realized it. But this is what I find very interesting about our generation here. The fact that when we get together, us young people, we can really spark a true difference, which is something we don't really realize. You know, in between all those cat memes and occasional trolling and selfies and feeling happy with 50 other people, we forget that we actually have the potential to make significant change. Now, these are just some statistics I threw in. You, know, you can look at that. But at the end of the day, Sri Lanka does have a growing number of people who are online. And bit by bit, it's not limiting itself to just Colombo and the more metropolitan areas. It's moving all across the country. And in my line of work, we have started to use social media to come into contact with people in more rural areas. Because believe it or not, almost everyone has a smartphone or knows someone who has a smartphone. You know, videos are being watched, information is being shared. And in a few years' time, I will guarantee that we will have almost everyone across the island interconnected just as well as all of us are within Colombo or within the Colombo um, city regions. Now, this image roughly shows about a million people, right? Uh, a million white people, I apologize. Um, but this is 
what the impact I wanted to create with this is if this roughly shows a million people, there are 4.4 million of us, young people, under the age of 30 in Sri Lanka. That's 4.4 million voices, 4.4 million ideas, 4.4 million possibilities. Have you all ever stopped to think that every single one of you in this room today is important, is vital, and can and should make an impact in how you conduct yourself and how you carry this country and our society forward? You don't think that when you like your crusher's picture. You don't think that when you tag yourself in a picture from last night. You don't think about that when you update your status about having a bad day. But let me tell you this, I think you should. Before I came here, and this is something that I was thinking about as I was walking up the stairs, I know that dialogue does engage and you know, brings people up on stage to speak to you about inspiring, innovative ideas. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's great that we are given this platform. But what's really great is not the wonderful speakers on here, but you guys in the audience. Because nothing we say here is going to matter if you all don't leave this venue today without being inspired, without having a significant thought in the back of your head, without realizing your potential as the young people of this country. Right? And one way that we as a community can create that change, not just in Sri Lanka, but also globally, is through the power of social media and through the connectivity that we have. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't deny the fact that it is a powerful tool. I mean, I remember when social media started you know, getting a bit of a buzz and your parents would be like, here, don't talk to anyone online. Don't add that fellow, don't share this picture. How many of you here know each other because of Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? Most of us up here today are known because of the work we share, because of the blogs we publish, because of the pictures we put online, and that is phenomenal. We're connected in ways that we don't even realize, and this is what I want to impress upon all of you here today. In 2015, the United Nations Security Council brought forward Resolution 2250. And what this resolution is, is where the Security Council, the highest power of the United Nations mandate, recognized that the most powerful and the most influential percentage of people in any community are young people, youth. Young people under the age of 30. And Resolution 2250 urged all governments to include young people as part of advocacy and awareness. And the reason they did this is because they realized that if this potential was left untapped, there would be no future for us. There would be no peace, no sustainability, and no security. For the Security Council, you know, a group of old men and women who are deciding when, whether or not the next bomb is going to explode, for them to feel and realize that young people are going to be the next deterrent in the future, that's a big deal, you guys. That's a huge responsibility. So, you know, while you're at home, like, lazily flipping through your feed, stop to remember the fact that you actually play a vital part in how your next few years are going to be. Remember that when you're online. Remember that when you're sharing something. Remember that when you're stating an opinion. Remember that when you're trolling someone. What we do online, how we conduct ourselves, what we can do is immeasurable. It is truly limitless what all of us here could achieve if we did the right thing. Essentially what this is, is social media has given us the power to do something. And by all means, you know, share your funny memes and the Infinity Wars trailer, but also remember that something you share can influence someone. And it can change someone's life for the better. It can change communities. For all of you who say that the internet is a bad place, 
I'd like you to look in a mirror and see what reflects back at you. Because social media is a reflection of who we are as a community. Remember that the next time you say, oh, Facebook ruined my life, or you know, I have a Twitter addiction, or you know, my selfies are going out of hand, that is a reflection of who you are. And that is how great the responsibility is. Imagine if our community, our online community could get together, could rally together to help people affected by a natural disaster faster than any other government institution could. Just imagine the potential we have to do greater things. Right? So remember this, you are a reflection of what you see out there. So my question was when I started this um, speech presentation was, are young people, are you aware? And you know, we are. We know what's going on in Syria, we know what's going on in the US, we know what's going on in our own country, so yes, we are aware. But are we aware of ourselves online? It's not enough to be aware of everything else if you don't know what you're doing. So my response to that question would be yes and no, but we should be. Be worthwhile. This is something I impress upon my life every day. And it's something I'd like to share with all of y'all because we're not different, we're all the same people, you know? We all have potential and that potential comes if you're worthwhile. You know, if you really know what you want to do, if you're really finding yourself, if you're, if you're inspired, you just need a tiny spark to make a difference. And as part of the young generation in this country, and as someone who is really looking forward to do something good, and as someone who hopes that all of you here will do the same, remember this. Ask yourself, is this worth it? Am I doing the right thing? And is this worthwhile? And if not, strive to be. With that, I'm going to walk down, but before I do, I just want to thank all of you for being here today. It's past six o'clock on a work day or a school day, depending on how old you are, and it's inspiring for me to come up here and see so many people in a full room, because I know that most of you are going to leave here having learned something, and that is going to affect all of us for the better in the future. So thank you for being a wonderful audience, and thank you to Dialogue for having all of us here today. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Guys, you'll have any questions? Hi. So Hi. I am very supportive and for the idea regarding a you regarding the concept of implementing a youth parliament within mm -hmm. our country. Mm -hmm. Where, because the youth is more influential and very innovative and also uh, very fast in, in problem solving. What's your opinion on this concept? And if, if you are for it, what are the obstacles and challenges we can face as the youth? So Sri Lanka already has a youth parliament. And the youth parliament essentially functions through different youth societies depending on whatever region you're in. So if you're personally interested in joining, my suggestion would be to contact the nearest youth organization or the, or the youth club wherever you live, join it, start working, start making a difference, get noted, and then you will start progressively moving towards becoming elected and being a part of the youth parliament. Now, my opinion on the youth parliament is it shouldn't be a mirror of what we see in the actual parliament of Sri Lanka. You know, we have enough and more people yelling their throats off. We, we don't need that. We need people who can actually sit down, take constructive criticism, and work towards making a difference. And for me personally, I think one of the negative aspects of that is it's very hard to get into contact with people of power. You know, it's very hard for young people to walk up to someone who can make a significant difference, you know, legally or illegally in Sri Lanka, because, you know, we're still considered young people. So my remedy for that is you need to kind of prove yourself and kind of push yourself forward all the time. Something that I have personally experienced is people don't tend to take me seriously sometimes until I open my mouth and start to talk. When they see me, they think, okay, you know what, just another girl with short hair, whatever, it's just, you know. But in those cases, something that's always helped me is to kind of get up, walk towards someone, and implement a conversation. And actually listen, because the problem that I see is we have people who are ready to do all the talking, but there's no one to do the listening and the acting. 
So for me, that would generally be what I would suggest, yeah. I hope that answered your question. Is there anyone else? Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, so, uh, small thing I <laughs> Right. Uh, but the All question right. But the question okay. <laughs> is uh, something related to what you just said. Yeah. Uh, you said that you, you go, you engage yourself in conversations, mm -hmm. you talk to people. Mm -hmm. One thing I think is that uh, because of this abundant social media, you mm -hmm. said 4.4 million people, uh, youth, youth, yeah, youth, right? Uh, that, that we are heavily addicted and we don't actually go up to a person and, and create conversation, we are, we are addicted. Because mm -hmm. it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. How do you... Uh, with your experience, you, you seem to have a lot of experience. It was very inspiring. Thank you very much. No so how do you think uh, we, should, we should turn this negativity surrounding these tools, uh, the online tools, how do you think uh, we should we, we convert that into a um, So I think most of us within this bracket, we were born into the evolution and the growth of technology. And while human beings had centuries to adapt, we didn't have a lot of time to adapt to social media. And I think this is partially one of the problems that we faced. We didn't know what to do. The moment technology boomed, the moment mobile phone companies were spurning out mobile phones every other year, you know, we couldn't keep up. And suddenly, social media, like all other things, became an addiction. People couldn't let go. There are two sides to every story, and I'd like to use somewhat, it's a bit of a cliche, but it's the same as giving someone a pen or, or, a, or a knife. You can either cut the cake, you can either stab somebody. And the problem is, we accept the fact that yes, there is a tendency towards addiction, but what do we do next? What's the next step? And that is what I'm trying to promote. But that is what I'm trying to make people understand, that there is something good that can actually come out of this. You know. True, it can make people severely antisocial, but it can also cure people who have severe anxiety and who can't actually have their voices being heard. You know, for the first time, a kid who lives in a really rural area can post something on a Facebook forum and actually have their voice be, have being heard, actually engage. So while there are negative aspects, as there are in everything in life, I think what's important is we start realizing this and start moving away from it. And a lot of the awareness campaigns that currently go on online are an important aspect, an important part of how we're slowly but surely combating this problem. But unfortunately, as I said, this is all very new to us. You know, social media is still something that we're trying to understand. People are only now starting to do research into social media advocacy um, and that sort of thing. So hopefully in the years to come, we'll know when to not cross the line and when to stop. But as of right now, what we can do is really just find a remedy to it and, and work towards preventing it becoming a total flop. Also, marble is better. <laughs> is anyone else? Hi. Uh, hi. Hi. So, uh, I have one suggestion actually, if you could uh, place uh, whatever the places that you go. Uh, last month, uh, I have been there in the uh, Malaysia for the Commonwealth Youth Summit, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the representatives from Sri Lanka. But uh, after, uh, I mean, the event, I got to know about more than 20 events happening nearby countries and the other regions, which doesn't know about any of uh, Sri Lankan youth. So I'm 29. I mean, next uh, May, I'm going to be 30 and I'm not youth. Mm -hmm. So whatever the things that I know, I shared between the, uh, the, the other people. But the thing is, there is no body or whatever the other uh, media that we can share those information. Like you, you could see 20 events within two months time. Uh, people, uh, I mean, youth could go there, get more information, share information. But I, I don't see any platform. So what would be the next platform that you could see? I mean, I can't. Uh, promote whatever the things that I know uh, alone. Mm -hmm. Maybe the other platform could sh support. Like, see, some events they provide whatever the uh, uh, all I mean expenses except the airfare. Okay. So that's the place you stuck. Like fifty thousand okay. rupees spending and go there, being four days, five days, get the knowledge and come back and serving Sri Lanka. You were in Malaysia, you said, right? Yes. Okay. Um, because this is a bit interesting now. Um, 
I was at the UN um, headquarters in in October, and we were there for the General Assembly. And along with us, there were lots of other delegates from other countries. And something I found really interesting, and something that I considered I was very proud of actually, was that Sri Lanka was one of the few countries where the selected representative is actually selected. Every other country basically appointed their representative. No one knew how it happened, no one knew what the process was, they were just appointed and sent there. Sri Lanka, however, as we always do, had a very rigorous um, interview process, like almost five interview panels, and the process of el elimination, all of that. So. It was very humbling to realize that we're actually progressing in that sect. You know, we're actually giving people the opportunity to come in and be a part of forums and that kind of thing. But to answer your question, the responsibility lies in the people who've actually participated, right? There's a reason that information doesn't go above a certain area. There's a, there's a reason why information is not shared. And it is difficult, I won't deny it. But in terms of representing a country somewhere, there's also involvement, whether you like it or not, in part of the government, right? They have a responsibility to select a suitable candidate. And although our ideas and our declarations are independent, it's also the job of the government to make sure that the selection happens and to do the funding, all of that. So there's a lot of, there's a huge backstory to it, something which I experienced myself. Now, I'm not sure how you found out about the opportunity to go to Malaysia, but I found out about my, this opportunity through a friend who had a Facebook post sent to her from another friend. So I'd like to think that technology kind of helped me to get to where I am right now. And this is also a way that we can help other people to start moving forward in that way as well. This is a way that we can start creating awareness and get people other than the government to actually fund us, to go and share ideas and be part of you know, different um, international, regional forums. Because I think that exposure is really, really important. Um, I can assure you in whatever capacity I have, I am trying to do my best to create more awareness about this. And I hope that if any of you have the opportunity to be part of regional or international forums, that you will do the same. Because we need to help ourselves get out there a bit more. But I will say that Sri Lanka is actually doing a lot better in comparison to a lot of other Western countries I saw. Um, because we are sharing this information and we are trying to push as many people representing all parts of the country forward. Um, you know, if you're ever interested, I'd advise you to go and you know, visit the Maharagami Youth Center. Um, and they do a lot of work there where they send a lot of delegates out to different countries, young people, um, to experience, you know, different sessions, to engage in debates, discussions, that sort of thing. So it's not that it's not happening, it's just that it's very difficult to make sure a lot of people know that it's happening. But, you know, we're getting there. We're definitely getting there.